Welcome, one and all, to the next round of the Pokemon San Diego Regional Championships. It is I, the Ninja Nick 333, back yet again. Uh, it looks like for some reason they decided to just throw up uh, the top five tables, I believe, or at least some of the tables, onto the stream to just show you who's playing, I guess. I don't think the names of the people generally matter, it's not really sports. Uh, and all of these are just real people playing a children's card game, and none of them are celebrities. <laughs> That's very important to note. None of us are celebrities. Don't hold us to high standards. I actually don't hold celebrities to high standards either. They are, they are also real people. But anyways, I digress. Um, uh, Ian Robb is actually one of my favorite players to watch. Uh, he's actually a friend of mine. Um, he, uh, he does pretty good. He plays some, like, off-the-wall text sometimes, like Volo in Mew and whatnot. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, most of these names are names you saw before Makani Tron we saw on stream earlier. Grant Manley's part of that Azul Caleb Gedimer group, so he's on that same deck that we saw Caleb playing in the previous round. Uh, we got a different Caleb here. We got Jake Earhart, Pablo Misa, Bradner, who we also just saw in the previous round. Um doing well i think uh i think bradner actually beat ian this round according to what i saw on twitter um but ian i know ian i'm not sure how he did in day two but i do know for a fact that ian was like the only six and two that didn't id their last round <laughs> he he forced uh he forced his i'm not sure if his opponent wanted to play it out either but i know ian's the person who wants to win the tournament and not just make it into day two because points don't matter for him winning the tournament matters for him so if you want to win the tournament play out your last round don't id into don't id into day two uh if you are just looking for points id into day two man you guarantee those points but anyways um although day twos are starting to get pretty big and it's gonna get to the point where you can't ID into day two would guarantee points, you know, because you could just do bad in day two and not make points. It's really bad. I think like in the last one, like people made like top 256 after getting, uh, after playing in day two or something or top 120. It was something ridiculous like that. But anyways, uh, so we got Pablo versus Jake here. Uh, looks like Pablo's on, looks like Lost Box Rayquaza, and I missed Jake's. It looks like, uh, something water-related. We see Radiant Greninja prized, and three water energies all right in a row there. So we are gonna see how this goes. This is probably a Palkia deck from Jake, because we do see the Articuno that paralyzes. I don't think that's going to be super useful against uh, Lost Box, uh, so we're going to see how this ends up turning out for him. Uh, the uh, weakness that uh, Pablo could potentially do if he has Raikou, yeah, it looks like he has the Amazing Rare Raikou in his deck. So the Amazing Rare Rayquaza Raikou uh, Lost Box deck. So uh, Raikou does 120 to your opponent's active and to one of their bench Pokemon. So you can... Uh, with a choice belt, one shot a um, uh, Palkia and then knock out something like, I think Articuno has 120 or less HP. Um, if not, there are other things that could be potentially on the bench. Like they might play uh, the Intellion line. So you could knock out Drizziles or Sobbles if those are in the deck. You could always just set up another uh, Palkia to get knocked out by something like a Cramorant as well. So it just it, it just seems like a it, on paper is a very good matchup for Pablo. Uh, the Rayquazas also, I think they do like 80 times the amount of different energies that are attached to the Pokemon. Um, so and it costs like three different colored energies. So I think you play like five different colored basic energies, usually like two of each. So, Lost Zoning the wrong energy at the wrong time in this deck is even more punishing than it is for the Kyogre decks, like we saw in the last round. So, we do see Comfy doing comfing things. Uh, it looks like Ordinary Rod going down into the Lost Zone. We're going to get the second Comfy. There is a Grass Energy there. Uh, we already saw one Grass Energy go into the discard, so do you really want to Lost Zone that Grass Energy? It might be safe to Lost Zone one of them. Uh, 
Remember, it is important to keep track of your energy cards. I think we just saw Pablo take notes there, too. So he might have wrote down that he had one, uh, only access to one grass. That would be something good to take notes on if you're playing this specific version of Lost Box. Like the Charizard version, it doesn't matter so much and it's much easier to check, but I think if you're playing the Kyogre or even more especially this version, you want to take notes on which ones are in the Lost Zone and discard. We see the water bucket thing coming out from Jake. He's going to search his deck for two water energies. Put them in his hand. Capaciously. Whatever capacious means. I don't know. I've never heard of that word until it was printed on that card. I'm not an English major. We do see the Palkia coming down with an energy attached to it. And then I think just a pass. He didn't shuffle his deck yet, so he's going to do that now. And see, that's nice. That's a time-saving move. He's going to do his... He ends his turn, and he's going to do his deck shuffle during his opponent's turn because he can't do anything during his opponent's turn. So might as well save that, like, 20 seconds that he's going to be doing shuffling his deck and do it on his opponent's turn instead of making his opponent wait for him. Uh, we do also see Chorus Experiment discards two, uh, puts two Battle VIP Pass in the Lost Zone. It's not turn one anymore, so you don't need those, so that's really great. Uh, and then we see a Comfy use flower selecting and put another chorus into the law zone that's not something i generally want to put in the law zone and then we see the next comfy uh it puts a metal energy in there because he wants to conserve that uh, mirage gate so again very important to make sure that he's aware that there's a metal energy in his law zone although pablo is a pretty uh storied player so i'm sure that he will be keep track of the fact that his energies are where they are that Rayquaza comes down uh, I believe I know one of its costs is I think it's fighting lightning and grass I want to say are its three energy costs I'm not 100% sure though I know it's definitely grass and lightning because all Rayquaza cards have grass and lightning as their costs on the dragon ones but I think the third one is uh, fighting. All the amazing rares have two or three different colored energies that they require in order to do attacks. That's like their thing. They're uh, like higher rarity one prizers, but they just have really weird attack costs in order to do their crazy attacks. Like Araiku doing 120 and 120 to the bench is insane. Especially against this deck. So we already see the Raikou down. Jake's going to want to uh, boss that up real quick. But unfortunately, he is playing Irida this turn. He is not set up in any way, shape, or form right now. It also looks like that Articuno was 110 HP because it was one shot by the Cramorant. Important to note there. We do see the Irida get Sobble and Level Ball. And then Level Ball gets Sobble. I do like that old black and white uh, artwork on the Level Ball. I love me my older cards, especially the cards that I actually played during those formats. I started playing during the early black and white era around, uh, it was a little before Boundaries Crossed. It was one of the Plasma sets I started uh, playing in. I mean, I ever so slightly dabbled in theme decks before that, but I played other card games before this. Uh, we have a Zigzagoon going down in there. That's fine. You don't necessarily need Zigzagoon. Uh, it can help you hit certain damage numbers sometimes, but like Rayquaza, you can just attach an additional energy to it if you're like 10 damage short. So Zigzagoon can save you from doing that, but it looks like the Raihan is going to get the grass energy from the discard onto the Raikou and search the deck for quite literally anything else. Uh, he is at 7 in the Lost Zone, so... I think he already has a Mirage Gate in hand, so he doesn't necessarily need to get a Mirage Gate right now. Looks like he's going for the Air Balloon, potentially. Yeah, he does have Mirage Gate. So he wants to make sure that he has the setup to be able to attack with this Raikou. So the... Yeah, he's also prize checking, I believe, as well, it looks like. So I think he might go for this Air Balloon. Yes, he does. Uh, that'll be so that that Comfey can retreat. 
Then he's going to next Mirage Gate to his Raikou. And hopefully there's a Choice Belt in his hand so that he can... Uh... Oh, it looks like he's not settling for the Air Balloon. Oh, he's going for another Raihan for next turn? Is he not playing Choice Belt? Ooh. Yeah, if he's not playing Choice Belt, he doesn't one-shot Palkia. That's interesting. I don't think he's playing Choice Belt. I don't see it in his deck. I mean, you don't need it on Rayquaza, so... Aw, uh, he must have the Metal Energy in hand as well. I, I don't know that... I, I know a few of the cards in his hand, but I didn't look at all of them. I do believe... Yeah, he has the Metal. So he has the Metal. So it's Grass, Lightning, Metal for the Raikou's attack. It's kind of nice that two of the colors are shared between the Raikou and the Rayquaza. Looks like a second Rayquaza is going down as well. He's just getting the whole field loaded up. Oh, and he's going to take... Oh, he takes the double knockout on Sobbles too. That's awesome. So he escape roped, forcing the Sobble up, and then knocks both of them out. That is even better than potentially knocking out the Palkia. That completely, like, neuters Jake's setup. So there are no ways to get Drizziles into play... Uh, I mean, he can Raihan, but what are you going to do? Raihan to this Palkia? And Jake's like, yeah, there's no way that I can even consider playing this game at this point. Pablo's already at three prize cards, and Jake hasn't even gotten, like, basically anything into play. Like, it, this is Pablo's game at this point. Also, why do I look so red right now? I turned my heat off. It's not even hot in here anymore. There you go. I look a little more my normal pasty white color now. Uh, so, something with the... I guess because it's like nighttime when I'm recording this now. The lighting is getting weird, I guess. So yeah, Pablo takes game one. That was pretty clean. Not really much to say about that. Uh, let's try to fast forward because I think they're going to be shuffling for a little bit here. Yeah. So a couple minutes into the future, we see Pablo prizes a Mirage Gate and two Battle VIP Pass. We saw Pablo didn't play a Battle VIP Pass game one, so that might not matter. Jake does prize a Sobble and the Quick Shooting Italian. Quick Shooting Italian is good against Lost Box because you could just, you know, snipe stuff. You can snipe comfies and stuff, eventually build up enough damage in play to take an additional prize turn. It's probably not going to matter. Um, he's, it's going to be preferred to get the other, uh, Intellion into play, so. I personally don't really like this Palkia deck. I think that the Articuno tech is, like, cute. Uh, it does help you against certain matchups, but I think Palkia is just dead in the water. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my puns. I, I apologize. I'm also, I'm also not sorry. I'm lying. Uh, we see a quick ball come out. He's going to get rid of Drapion. That is pretty bad in this matchup. You don't need that. That is only for Mew. Fun fact, Drapion can also one-shot Genesect. So, <laughs> it's very good against Mew. Um, we see Palkia, Sobble, Manaphy come down. All right, so this is looking way better for Jake. He's got two Sobbles and Palkia in play and Manaphy. Yeah, he was able to use that Hisuian Heavy Ball to get that one Sobble out of the prize card. So he doesn't have any Sobbles prized right now. He's also aware of his entire prize card setup. Looks like the Quick Ball is coming down, discarding the... Raikou. I think since the Manaphy is in play, Pablo's like, yeah, I'm not even going to bother with the Rayquaza this game. Uh, because uh, the Mirage Gates are going to be better off serving the uh, Rayquaza for one shots on, th on the two prizers. Um, since it looks like he's not playing Choice Belt at all, um, the Raikou isn't going to be able to uh, one shot a Palkia. So might as well just conserve all the mirage gates for the rayquazas and just get rid of the raikou but in that first game the manaphy was not in play yet and you saw how much work that 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 raikou single-handedly won him that game 
So it looks like we are uh, quick balling for the Radiant Greninja. We're going to use that for consistency. Discard an energy draw two every turn. Uh, Pablo is also prize checking. Trying to see what else he prized. Yeah, see, that's one of the things that I have a real problem with, is I can't really prize check very well. Like, uh, I'm like, uh, I'm like one of those people that if something's not in front of me, like, I'm, I'm a very visual person, so, like, if something's, and some, if something's not in front of me, it, it's not on my mind. So, if I look through my deck, I don't always notice things that are missing. Especially when it's not sorted. So if I'm like playing Reggie's or something, I can, I'll just sort all the Reggie's to the top and then see, okay, which Reggie's aren't here because I know my Reggie counts, but I can't do that with every single card in the deck. Like that's just way too time consuming. It's not fair to my opponent. Uh, it's it. And if you take like more than like however many seconds to do your deck search, it's borderline illegal play anyway so oh it looks like just a pass from pablo he doesn't even have a single card in his lost zone no comfies in play no choruses experiments in hand oh this is gonna go downhill for pablo real quick because that cram the perfect it, it would have been great to get a knockout on that sobble with cramorant's attack um but no, he has an escape rope. He has a mana fee, but like, he, he just does not have anything. He has nothing going for him. He even knows what his top deck is because of the Oranguru. God, and it's 7.20 at round six already. That tournament's not ending till at least 10. <laughs> uh, let's see. The Irida gets uh, Drizzile, Capacious Bucket. Capacious Bucket gets the two water energies. Uh, Drizzile can go get something like a Scoop Up Net to scoop up. He can evolve the active and then grab Scoop Up Net and then Scoop Up Net the active. Um, but he's not going to go for that route. He's going to uh, evolve the benched one. Uh, he could always get, like, uh, Air Balloon. Looks like he might be going for... Yeah, it looks like he's just gonna look for another Sobble. He might be... He's got Sobble at the top of his deck. He just moved there. So he might be looking for Level Ball. I think he's also looking for... I think he's gonna go for Evo Incense. Is he gonna Evo Incense for the Palkia V-Star? Yeah, it looks like he's gonna attach to Sobble. Then he's going to keep calling. And he's gonna get one Sobble into play. I think that that's fine in this position. You know Pablo's got a real bad setup right now. Oh, and Pablo... So Pablo has two Psychic now in the discard, and discarding that second Psychic, all that it got him was an addition... was two Lightning Energies. Pablo's hand is so super dead. Jake's just styling on him at this point. It's, uh, that's pretty rough. I mean, Pablo can still come back. I mean, Lost Zone is just one Prizers versus a deck that has two Prizers. So, I mean, if he can force Jake to have a second Palkia at some point, and he knocks both of those out with Rayquazas, like, it'll be Pablo's game to win. But if Jake can go hard for the Intellions, uh, he can always, like, if he's playing Rare Candy, he could always Rare Candy the active Sobble into an Intellion, and then attack with it and start spreading damage to the bench and eventually take a two-prize turn with single prizers. That's always a good play. I love playing Rare Candy in my Palkia deck because of just being able to do that. Being able to just turn two, attack with uh, Intellion after a Keep Calling turn is just beautiful. But likely, in order to fit that Articuno in there, I highly doubt we're going to see Rare Candy in this list. Uh, the Irida comes out for the Quick Ball and Palkia V-Star. Palkia V-Star will probably get evolved immediately and... Um, he's also got the scoop up net, so he can scoop up the entire Intellion. Yeah, now that he built that up. So he is going to now 
use the Drizzile? I mean, he could always retreat his active Sobble. He doesn't need to scoop that one up at any point. So he can retreat and then use the Palkia's V-Star power to just load up a bunch of Pokemon. I mean, I think it's perfectly fine to start attacking with, Kyo uh, with Palkia here. You have no fear that it's going to get knocked out. You already saw that, you know, it wasn't likely that he... Like, if he could have knocked out the Palkia and uh, Asable on that previous game, like, he would have, right? So, I think that already telegraphed that Pablo is not playing Choice Belt. So, I think you feel safe attacking with the Palkia V-Star here. He does use the V-Star power, only gets two energy, but again, you're so far ahead already. Pablo's couple... And Pablo draws uh, that... Uh, uh, a, another Lightning Energy. You already see that one's down on that Greninja. So you know that there was an additional one there because there was only three. Uh, there was only two Lightning Energy drawn on the previous turn. We're going to see a retreat into the Comfy that we finally drew. Hopefully we get a Chorus's Experiment off of this. Otherwise, we are not sitting pretty. Because even if you get the Chorus's Experiment, you still need another Comfy and a Scoop of Net. Or, I, you see, he has Air Balloon in his hand, so I guess there's that. And the Cramorant just died, so how are you going to get another Cramorant? Yeah, if I were Pablo, I wouldn't even be playing this game at this point. I would have already scooped and just gone to the next game. They have, like, 30 minutes, exactly, to play a game three. I would just devote my time to that game. Yeah, this this doesn't even look... Like, I don't even think there's a way that you can win this game at this point. I mean, he's only down one prize, right? So I think maybe you can play out this turn... Uh, and then just see how that goes. He's Raihanning to a Sableye, and he has one in his Lost Zone. And he's going to search for the Chorus's Experiment, probably. Or a Comfy, it looks like. Because you could always... Oh, man, this is so bad for Pablo. Yeah, I think he can maybe afford to play this turn out. But, like, if his next turn has the same amount going on... Like, if he's not taking any prize cards next turn... I don't see that there's any reason to continue playing this game. Yeah, so we see Comfey come down with an escape rope. Forcing that Sobble up. He does have the air balloon in hand if he can get another two in his Lost Zone and Cramorant, but he already played his supporter for turn. So he does finally get that Chorus's experiment, but... It's too late at this point. He had to work so hard just to get to the Chorus's Experiment. Just to get that second Comfey in play. Just to get the first Comfey in play. Yeah, he's already got three uh, energy in his discard too. That's like, that's a lot. He's gonna have to like energy recycler sometime soon, I believe as well. Cause he'll probably be discarding that next lightning energy from his hand in order to uh, use the Radiant Greninja yet again. And then Chorus's Experiment. And then hope to god you get like a Kramer Ant or something. See, this is also a rough spot. So if you have to like escape rope into a Kramer Ant to put it active the next turn, Jake could always just put up Intellion and then scoop up Net it again. And then he essentially heal all that damage off and then be able to reuse the Drizzile. So, like, yeah, again, bad position for Pablo. Maybe he can pull it back. Probably not. We see Capacious Bucket again. We see Boss's Orders. Yeah, Boss's Orders, Capacious Bucket off this Intellion. Getting the, uh, using the Capacious Bucket, getting the two Water Energy. Hard retreating the uh, Sobble. He's going to just attack with his Palkia again. And he's up two prizes now. Yeah, but this is this is the thing too, is that... Oh, and he knocks out the Sableye instead as well. I'm not sure if I agree with that here. I think you just conserve the boss's orders for another turn. Or you get rid of the Radiant Greninja. Yeah, I'm not sure if I agree with knocking out the Sableye here, because he's only got two in the Lost Zone. There's no way he's getting up to 10 on this turn. 
So if you hold the boss's orders for the next turn, you know Pablo's hand is still pretty dead. It's highly unlikely that he's going to be Marnieing you. So you can just hold on to the boss for the next turn. And then have your choice of whatever you want to knock out then. Uh, then you can knock out the Sableye when Pablo gets closer to being able to even use it. You could have knocked out a Comfy, so that's one less Comfy that Pablo can use on this turn. Especially knowing how dead Pablo's hand is. There is the retreat into second Comfy. We're going to use second Comfy. We, <laughs> we see another Colrus and the Zigzagoon. I think it's fine getting rid of the Zigzagoon here. You're going to have Colrus for this turn and Colrus for next turn. So we're at what? Five? Six in the Lost Zone. Six cards in the Lost Zone right now. So he's still one away from using Mirage Gate. That Manaphy is in play, so you can't really attack with Radiant Greninja. And I don't even know if you play Water Energy in this version of the deck either, so I don't even think you can attack with the Radiant Greninja. There's a quick ball getting rid of the Battle VIP pass. You definitely don't want that at this point. Uh, getting the Rayquaza. Again, he's one away from using that Mirage Gate in his hand, so he won't be able to... St oh, he has multiple Mirage Gate. He has at least two, maybe even three. It was hard to tell what that one card in his hand was next, next to the left Mirage Gate. He has scoop up net escape rope, so he can potentially get one more into the loss zone this turn. But then you're forcing the Palkia to the bench. So you don't you don't really want to be doing that, but you also don't want to be passing turn without taking a knockout on that Palkia. Oh man. That's awful. Yeah, he doesn't have like another quick ball. Yeah, no. Yeah, this is rough. Yeah, I think if I were Pablo, I would have already scooped this game. You're going to be behind three prize cards already. Yeah, and so far, like, since I've, since I've said that Pablo should have scooped, seven minutes have gone by. So, keep, keep track of that. So, it's always important to know when to scoop. See, and now Pablo decides to scoop. So he could have saved exactly seven minutes by deciding to scoop and go to the next game. So will that seven seconds matter? We will have to see. The other thing is that he should be favored against Palkia because of the whole fact that he has the Raikou and he has the Rayquaza. He, he should be able to lead on the prize trade with either one of those attackers. Let's say Jake prizes the Manaphy and can't get to his heavy ball or prizes the Manaphy and the heavy ball. You just go in with Raik Raikou and you win. <laughs> like, If he starts with Palkia, you can just blow it up with the Rayquaza. You're all single prizers, so. Uh, there's nothing like Dunsparce for colorless Pokemon, you know? Like, uh, for the water Pokemon, you don't have that same, a Pokemon with that same ability to remove the lightning weakness. So you're always going to be able to do heavy damage with that Raikou. Even if you're not choice belting it, like putting that, uh, you could always do 240 to a Palkia V-Star and then knock out a Sobble. And then you could then put up Sableye, and then knock out another Sobble, and the Palkia V-Star. So, like, there's so many different routes that Pablo has to make this a favored matchup. And especially with the heavy play that Lost Box is at right now, I don't think I would ever feel comfortable playing Palkia.
So, Pablo's checking his prize cards yet again. Gets Battle VIP past turn one. That's pretty good. And he's going first. I always, I always feel very conflicted on whether or not I want to go first with Lost Box. Like, I always... Like, the ter times when I go first is when I have Chorus's Experiment in my hand. And the times that I go second is when I don't. <laughs> you know? And it's like... I want to Chorus's experiment on my first turn to be able to guarantee that I get that battle VIP pass. You only really need to play one, as I've been saying in the previous rounds, but like playing the one battle VIP pass turn one is so important that I personally want to go second with the deck. Because then that also, if you use two Comphase and Chorus's experiment, you go to four in the law zone and you just attack with Cramorant immediately. <coughs> Now, I'm not saying it's correct to go second. It's definitely correct to go first. I'm just saying I prefer to go second, even though it's wrong. <laughs> we see that Battle VIP pass gets Comfy and Radiant Greninja. That's pretty That's pretty cookie cutter for Lost Box. Uh, that Those are your consistency engine. So, you're going to be discarding energies with Greninja to draw more cards, which we do see here. And then we're going to be able to use, most likely, the, the double Comfy, at least in order to... You see, there it is. There's the Chorus's Experiment, which he's not able to play on turn one. But this is- his opening is fine. He doesn't need the Chorus's Experiment turn one here, going first. Because he already started with the Battle VIP Pass. So this is a little bit of an interesting decision. He decides to get rid of the Escape Rope. I think that's correct. Even though he already has one Grass in his discard and he has two in hand, I think that you still conserve the energy over the escape rope here especially since you just hard retreat and you can't attack on this first turn anyway because you're going first he does loss on a metal energy though that'll be important to keep track of we all are also using oranguru and we get another battle vip pass so hopefully that card he put on top wasn't too important i didn't really see what he put on top but that's going to get shuffled into the deck. Oh, it was a Chorus. <coughs> yeah, so he conserved the Chorus to the top of his deck to save him from it being lost to a Marnie. But then he gets punished on himself here by drawing into the Battle VIP Pass. And he's like, well, I really should play this because it's turn one. Uh, it looks like he only gets just the Cramorant with it, though. I mean, he does have Raikou in his hand. So, I mean, I guess getting just the one is fine, but was that worth shuffling your Colrus back in? I mean, otherwise it's a dead card, right? Oh, he does have another Colrus though, so it's fine. Yeah, so since he had two Colrus, that was that was the perfect play from Pablo there. Conserves conserves a Colrus in case he gets Marnade, he's guaranteed to still have it in his hand, but also uh, still keeps one in hand in case he top decks battle VIP pass off the Oranguru. And he, of course he does, because, you know, luck. We see double battle VIP pass start from Jake, so he's doing it better than Pablo is. I mean, Pablo started double vi uh, battle VIP pass this game, but... It's really good in uh, Palkia to be able to start double battle VIP pass. I never liked playing more than one. I just like my turn one Irida going second to get the battle VIP pass. And then just not playing more than that because it's a dead card every other turn of the game. I know four is optimal, but I don't like it. That's. <laughs> I guess this is just the round of me telling you what I like that's incorrect. <laughs> Uh, we see that second battle VIP pass just gets one Sobble, and then he passes. So that's a little interesting of a decision. Definitely wants to conserve that mana fee that he started with, though. He doesn't want to just leave that active and let it get uh, murdered by Cramorant. So we see another Grass Energy attaching for turn to that Comfy. 
Uh, yeah, he probably's just probably gonna just be able to just retreat and cram. Oh, he has the boss though, so he's gonna be able to boss up that mana fee, and he's gonna take that out with the cramorant instead this turn. Uh, puts the I think the battle VIP pass was in his hand, so he's gonna be able to. Oh no, he already used Comfe. I think he put Chorus on top of his deck. Bench is the Raikou. I think it's probably safe to bench that there. Even if it gets knocked out, you can just go Rayquaza the next turn instead. Knock out the Manaphy, and now the Raikou threatens. It can do a double, like even, even if any of the Sobbles evolve, they're, you know, you don't think, I don't think he's playing Rare Candy in, in uh, Jake's deck there. So I don't think anything is gonna turn into Intellion this turn. So he's got the Drizzile, but Drizzile will still get one shot, whether it's active or on the bench, by that uh, Raiko. So, again, looks like Pablo's game to win. He's in a very commanding lead, but he could have still had this exact same board state and seven minutes more on the clock to guarantee it. So, but that's all I'm saying. I think that the 15 minutes that are left are probably enough to finish this match. But, you know, uh, just because of the plus three turns, I think if there was no plus three turns, it might not be enough time for, for Pablo to win. So, Irida for Radiant Greninja, Capacious Bucket, Capacious Bucket for two Water Energy. You see that play a lot. Irida for Capacious Bucket for two Water Energy. Always just save the time and just search the water energies immediately with it because if you shuffle your deck and then play the capacious bucket after, you're just a jerk. You're just wasting my time. Always save as much time on the clock as possible. You only get so much time, you gotta use it wisely. Jake's like really deciding how he wants to do this. So he's going to Drizzile a second time here. Yeah, so he wanted to Radiant Greninja first and then use the second Drizzile. So I think he might have drawn into the second Drizzile, but even if he didn't, I think it's more correct to just hope that you draw into what you wanted to search for so that maybe you could search for something different instead uh looks like the radiant greninja is uh going to be attacking this time the palkia does fully charge up the radiant greninja and he knocks out double comfy so this is actually a really good spot for jake that came out kind of out of nowhere it feels like but uh yeah Knocking out double comfy, that's Pablo's main way to get things into the loss zone. Uh, even if he has Chorus's experiment, which you always have to assume he has, that only puts it up to six loss zone cards, so he won't be able to Mirage Gate this turn. <coughs> I had my heat on for like an hour, so now I'm, my air is all dry because I have electric heat. guzzle in this Gatorade until my throat's better. <laughs> Ordinary Rod puts back in two energy, two comfy. Well, let's see if he can get back into those. He's got the Radiant Greninja ability. I'm sure he has an energy in his hand to use that. Yeah, he's got a lightning in hand. He is going to Chorus first. Oh! Oh! Oh, that's awful. Three energy and two Mirage Gates? Um... Psychic Grass. Because you know he plays at least three Grass. So that's definitely the correct play. But oof, that is... That is not juicy at all. That is awful. Yes, I am still listening to music. Thank you, YouTube.
Yeah, that's rough. When you have to get rid of two energies off a of chorus. A again, especially in this deck, you do not want to be lost zoning certain things. Pablo almost makes a mistake and retreats his Cramorant into the non-existent Comfy. Lost Zone's the Air Balloon, and now he has seven in the Lost Zone. He can Mirage Gate, but his energies are in the Lost Zone and discard. So let's see if he has enough in deck to even power up this Rayquaz uh, this Raikou this turn. Also, what is that Lightning Pokemon? That can't be another Raikou. You can only play one Amazing Rare, right? Or no, you can play multiple of an Amazing Rare. He's playing two Raikou. For some reason, I'm thinking they're like uh, the Radiance, but they're definitely not. Yeah, he's playing double Raikou in that. That's actually a little surprising. I'm not, I wouldn't be expecting that. So there's the energy recycler. He's gonna put three energy back into his deck. You really wanna conserve the energy recycler to get the full effect when you have five, but because of that chorus, he really has to he really has to just use it now. So he's got what he needs. He Yeah, so he can now I saw a lightning in his deck, so the second Mirage Gate can power up this uh Raikou. <coughs> Yeah, so Jake had a two prize turn, but now Pablo's gonna have a two prize turn. Yeah, so put the fighting on the Rayquaza and the lightning on the Raikou. The only thing that would perfectly clean this up is if there was a way to get that Radiant Greninja in the active, because it has the only water energy in play. Um, but, uh... I think that that's, it's still fine to take out Sobble Drizzile. Yeah, that's really good. Pablo's not, likely not going to be able to take another two prize turn on this next turn, but yeah, it looks like Jake's going to have to, he's probably going to have to Irida and attach for a turn or Raihan and attach for a turn. Yeah, it looks like he has the Raihan. So he is going to be able to attack with his Palkia. But at what cost? Because the Rayquaza is now staring him down on the bench. And Pablo does have another, yet another, Mirage Gate in his hand. So he may be able to power up that Rayquaza and one-shot the Palkia. And if he does that, the game is basically won for him. Because then all he needs is to, like, knock out something with a Cramorant, really. So Raihan gets, it looks like, Intellion. Intellion is going to get two. Not only does it increase the HP of his bench Pokemon, but it's going to allow him to get two item cards. So even if Pablo somehow gets another, like, Raikou set up the next turn, uh, it won't be able to knock out a bench Pokemon and allow Pablo to take all his prize cards if, like, Pablo pulls, like, a choice belt out of thin air. It's also important to note, Pablo does should be playing the Sableye. We did see it in the previous game when he Raihaned to it. When he had one in the law zone. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, just scoop, man. When you're Raihaning to a Sableye with one in the law zone, just, just scoop. Just scoop. Just do it. Don't let your dreams be dreams. All right, quick balling away the other Intellion, getting another Palkia. I'm not sure if he's going to want to put that down or not. He might. Yeah, he's going to need another attacker after this Palkia, most likely. And I don't think that Intellion or Radiant Greninja are going to get him there. So he does. Oh, he, and he, uh, Jake also puts down Lost City so that the Raikou is Lost Zoned. So that's pretty cool, but I don't think he knows that Pablo's playing double Raikou. So that could still potentially come up, but it's going to be interesting to see. Can Rayquaza take the one shot on this Palkia? He has the one Mirage Gate and an attach for turn, but 
is there gonna be i don't know if that's is that enough that's four i think it's 80 times right any i think that would be 20 short and then zigzagoon scoop up net zigzagoon that would do it that's asking for a lot though i don't think he has anywhere near those resources i think he did loss on the zigzagoon earlier anyway but either way you're gonna put a lot of damage down on this palkia and then you can uh set up for just sableye Oh, he does have the Zigzagoon in hand. Yeah, if he just... If he has a way to attach for turn, Zigzagoon, scoop up, Zigzagoon. He has the Colrus. He might be able to get there. There's scoop up net. I don't see a energy, though. I think he needs... I think he needs... I don't think he had an energy in his hand. Oh, no, he does. Is that knockout? Oh, he's getting rid of the scoop up net though. Maybe I miscounted the damage. Oh, he already has a scoop up net in hand. Mm. Yeah, it's 80 times for each basic energy. So 80, 160, two. Oh no, that's already enough. I just, I'm just stupid. That's 320 with what he has on his Rayquaza right now. So he doesn't even need to do the Zigzagoon stuff. I don't know why I was thinking it was 260. I'm like, 80 times 2 is 160, and then 160 times 2 is 260. <laughs> Fucking stupid. Can you believe I was a math major? This is what happens when you're no longer in school. This is what happens when you go to American schooling. Funny interaction, the Palkia. Wait, why is the Palkia getting lost zoned? Yeah, because the uh, the stadium was replaced. There's a training court in play. So that Palkia is not in the law zone. It's in the discard pile. Yeah, yeah, he forgot that his stadium was replaced. Okay. Always important to maintain game state, guys. Make sure that you know what stadium's in play. We see Raihan yet again. So we're going to get whatever we're missing. It looks like the, uh, the Palkia V-Star. But I mean, Pablo needs one prize now. Uh, nothing on Jake's board can get one shot by the Cramorant, which is important to note. But if Pablo has the ability to Mirage Gate one more time, he might be able to pull it out. Yeah, it's a little weird. It's like, how is Pablo going to take this last prize card is the question. Like, Jake's going to have to take three prize cards. So, I think that gives Pablo enough time to just stack damage into play with Cramorant. And get to Sableye to be able to spread damage. So, I think that this is guaranteed win for Pablo. He still has three minutes left on the clock. Should be ten. Um, but, yeah. I mean, there's only... Oh, there's the Sableye. There's the Raihan. Putting the Psychic Energy on it. Searching for literally anything he just searches quick ball because it's there and, oh and he oh and he zigzagoon pings and then sable eyes in order to put a total of 130 damage onto the radiant greninja and ends up winning the game yeah that game three was pretty well played by paula i'm just very much questioning what happened game two as to why he continued playing it out when when uh when it was just so bleak for him really but yeah i mean games one and two really show you how the matchup goes i think the key thing that really won pablo the game is having the boss that one turn where he was able to cramorant knock out the mana fee i think that was on like his second turn or something but yeah being able to have the boss on that key turn if he didn't have it then and that mana fee ended up staying in play i think that there is a possibility that Jake could have pulled it back, but it, again, Pablo was still favored in that match, and that, that turn is essentially what won him the game, so.
Um, but yeah, thanks guys for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff and whatnot. And uh, we will see you guys in the next round. Peace out.